Baba tunakushukuru tunasema hakuna Mungu kama wewe Asante kwa uwepo wako katika mahali hapa katika maisha ni mwetu tunapoendelea na kukuabudu na kukusifu bana tunaomba Mungu kawe pamoja nasi hata tukienda kusikia neno lako Jehova ukanenee kila mmoja wetu Asante kwa wana preteam tunawabarikisha mikononi mwako ukawatumie katika jina la Yesu Kristo Asante bwana ali katika jina la Yesu tunaomba na kushukuru Amen Can you appreciate God with a good clap Bibia watu mako mazuri Yesu baba baba mazuri mako mazuri Shukuru bwana as you come up Jesus We thank you Jesus Even as we go to worship the Lord we start by telling him that he has done us so well Ame tutenda mema asubuhi ya leo. And uh we thank God. Just tell God, thank you. Worship him in your own words. Sharaba zakata ya rama zenderere. Oh, sharaba ba zenderere ba zakaya rama. Ame tutenda mema. Ame tutenda mema. Sharaba zakaya rama. You have done me well You have done me well You have done me well Jesus You have done me well You have done me well You have done me well You've done me well you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well Jesus you have done me well you have done me well
Appreciate the Lord. Say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come and give him praise. He's worthy. Give him praise. Give him a shout today. Are you ready to praise God today? Yes. Are you ready? Can I hear a shout of victory in this What? Speak in the Holy Spirit. If you can speak in the Holy Spirit, worship God today. Rabba Zakataya Ramamama. We welcome the Spirit of God. We welcome you, Spirit of God. We welcome the Spirit of worship. The Spirit of worship. Shekataya Rabba. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory. Shaya Rabba Baba. 
Shekataya Ramama Zenere Shekataya Rama Zandaya Rababa Shikaya Rama Zeketereba Shekaya Rama Zenere Shekara Zenereba Worship God in your head Worship Him in the Holy Ghost Shekara Zandaya Rama Shekara Babo Spirit of Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known living. The glory of the living God. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known living. The glory of the living God. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let the weight of your glory Let the weight of your glory fall Sing Spirit Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known
is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you in all the earth. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Stand the mess, stand the mess in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do.
Your presence is a
We glorify your holy name. Lord God, in Jesus' name, as your servant come to minister your word, use her as your vessel. Speak in this house for we are listening. Lord God, in Jesus' name, allow your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Leveration, to take charge. Anoint her lips. Lord God, in Jesus' name, use her again as your vessel. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you come and share the word of God? Let's appreciate left with a good clap in Jesus' name. So it's wonderful to be in the house of God. Uh, on Sunday, I began to share on the message of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we are continuing with that. And uh, we're just going to to see the word of God this evening or this afternoon. And I know the Lord is going to bless our lives. And you see, it's an amazing thing when we see young people surrendering their life to Jesus. It is amazing. Because in our youthhood, there are things that takes place in our lives and they are permanent. Just, and the devil knows that, and that is why he, he always wants to put his heart over the young people because he wants to put his mark on them in their youthhood. That is the reason, even some of the physical features that we have, we develop them at youth, at the youth stage, and we keep them there permanent. I believe even when the move of God is over our life and God places his hand on us, I believe it's also permanent. Amen? It is permanent. And uh, if God places his hand on us, we can be sure that our day is to come, it shall be well with us. And as we gather in the presence of God, we are telling the devil, 
that he is losing his ground over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, he is not going to press anything in our life that will be a reminder of what he did, of what he missed with our life when we were young. But we are going to keep a testimony that in my youthhood, God placed his hand over me. He did something that is permanent. And today, and those years to come, that you'll be enjoying what God will be doing in your life. Uh, today, I want to share on the work of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has tremendous work that he do in our lives. And that is what I'm sharing. And because there is something we are doing, all of us cooperate as a church. So I think I have to just share it as I shared it in the services so that we all be together as a, a, as a body, as a church. And uh, I want us to turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. This is the first mention of the Holy Spirit in the scriptures. And we are trusting God that even as we share his word, that he is going to give us an open heaven, angels ascending, and angels descending. Our prayers reach in heaven and he died in Jesus' name. And our destinies getting aligned according to the purposes of God for our life. In Jesus' mighty name. So in the, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verses 2. And the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was on the surface of the deep. God's spirit was hovering over the surface of the waters. So we see the first mention of the Holy Spirit in Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says, in the beginning, God. From the very beginning, God was there. And we see the Holy Spirit mentioned in Verses 2, that God's spirit was hovering over the surface of the waters. And the main lesson that many people are not experiencing the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is because they are not conscious of his presence. Not that he is not there, not that he is not at work, but many times we are not conscious of his presence. But once we are conscious of his presence, we will see his manifestation in our lives. So the first work of the Holy Spirit is the creative work. The creative work. The creative works of God are carried out by the Holy Spirit. Where something needs to be created, it is the Holy Spirit who gets it done. God the Father will decide what to be done. God the Son, he will declare it. God, the Holy Spirit, he will execute it. Anytime God the Father decides that something that is to be done, he decided, but it is the Holy Spirit who executes it. God the Father will make the decision, God the Son will make the declaration, and God the Holy Spirit will do the execution. He is the one who executes the, de the, the decision of the Father. The Bible says the earth was formless. It had no shape. It was covered with darkness. It was empty. There was no life. But when the Holy Spirit came, the Bible says he turned the chaos that were there into order. And I'm telling you, when we embrace the Holy Spirit in our lives, that he is able to turn our chaos in, into order. He is able to call our lives into order. God the Father decided it was time to create. God the Son declared that there be light. But who was to execute that and bring light? It was God the Holy Spirit. He executed the purposes of God the Father. And I want to tell you, it is the will of God. There are times there can be chaos in our life. We can be in a chaotic situation in our lives. But when we embrace the Holy Spirit... He comes and he helps us. Somebody maybe could be asking, but you see, sometimes I feel weak. I have so many weaknesses. You know, 
how would the Holy Spirit work in me? When we see in the scriptures and especially in the New Testament, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, he did not come to the strong. You remember Peter in the upper loom. Few days he had denied Jesus, isn't it? Few days Thomas had doubted that Jesus has resurrected. But on the day of Pentecost, because the Bible says the Holy Spirit came in frames of fire. In frames of fire. And the Bible says that they were, they were 120. I think Kanejo had descended and counted their hand. Because there are 120 frames that, that fell on each one of them. Imagining Thomas the doubter, his frame was there. Imagine Peter the betrayer, his frame was there. So if you are weak, then truly you are a candidate of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You can see his manifestation. You can see his works made manifest in your life. He came because we are weak. He came so that he can help us. And even as the young people, I want to tell you, there are times that people say, yeah, the young people cannot stand. The young people are weak. But we have the Holy Spirit. We have a helper. And we can stand even in the midst of all what is in our society today. Why we have the Holy Spirit. The mission of the Holy Spirit when we see in the creation that the, that the darkness was on the surface of the deep. That's what the Bible says. But when the Holy Spirit came, he shattered the darkness that was covering the surface of the deep. And I believe the mission of the Holy Spirit even in our life, it is to shatter every darkness that is covering our destiny. It is to shatter every darkness that is covering the, you know, our lives, that is hindering the purposes of God prevail in our lives. And as he scattered the darkness that was covering the, you know, the, 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 deep of the surface of the deep, I believe in the name of Jesus that when the, we are embraced the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit come into our life, he will scatter every manner of darkness in our lives. And as the Holy Spirit begins to work in our life, he does an amazing work. Because whatever he's begin to do, he do it from the foundation. And he do it very well. He does not solve a problem halfway. He, he deals with it from the root. Even as it was in the creation, he exec when God the Father said that there be light, and he executed that, even today there is light. Because once he solves a problem, he solves it from the root. Even in our lives, I believe when we embrace the presence of the Holy Spirit, every darkness the devil would want to bring in our life, at any stage of our life, the Spirit of God will shatter it down. In Jesus' mighty name. Number two, work of the Holy Spirit. It is salvation to mankind. Salvation to mankind. Salvation to mankind. You see the Holy Spirit. He is the divine magnet that attracts souls to the kingdom of God. Without the Holy Spirit, nobody would ever get born again. And that's when the Bible says, in John 16, verses 8, in John 16, verses 8, that when he come, that is the Holy Spirit, that he will convict men of sin, righteousness, and of judgment. Nobody would come to Jesus. Nobody would be born again without the Holy Spirit convicting them. He come to convict the world of sin. He come to convict the world of righteousness. He come to convict the world of judgment. And I believe in our lives, we are a proof of the works of the Holy Spirit. Because one time, he convicted us. And we came to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we gave our life to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will, con will still continue to convict us if we allow him. Like the way we allowed him. In that day we got born again. When he convicted us, we 
partnered with him. We, you know, we worked together with him. And we got born again. Even on matters of righteousness, if we partner with him, if we cooperate with him, it will not be difficult to live a holy life. It will not be difficult, you know, to, to walk in righteousness. Why? The Holy Spirit, he is the one that is convicting us of righteousness. And also, he is the one that convicts the world of judgment. You know, there is an argument outside there. People can really argue how God can, how can God create man and then at the end of the day, he just throw man to hell and they tell, they, they argue and say, it is not possible. You know, how can God create man and then throw him to hell? But the Holy Spirit, he is the one that convicts men of judgment. That it's appointed once for man to die than to face the judgment. And we know that. Despite the, the debate and the argument there, we know it is appointed once for man to die and then the judgment. And with that, we understand how we need to embrace the Holy Spirit and walk with him and, and allow him to do a deep work in our lives. And number three, work of the Holy Spirit. Number three, work of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who does the, the work of the resurrection and the restoration. The resurrection and all the restorative works are carried out by the Holy Spirit. The resurrection and the restorative work is carried out by the Holy Spirit. Anytime God wants to bring a restoration in our life, the Holy Spirit, he will carry it out. The Bible says in Romans, in Romans 8, 11. In Romans 8, 11. In Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who laced up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will lace he who lays up Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The spirit of God, he is the very spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. When he died and they put him in the grave, on the third day, it is the Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead. And that is what the scripture is saying. That the spirit of him who lays Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who lays up Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. When the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, the Bible is telling us he is able to quicken our mortal bodies. You know, there are times the devil wants to challenge us with sickness and disease. Amen. Or the young people do not get sick at times. <laughs> they, do they? Do they? Do they? Maybe not now, but, but maybe you have, ever, you have never experienced it, but you, maybe you have witnessed it. But the Bible is saying that the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, He lives in us. And he is able to quicken our mortal bodies through the spirit of him who dwells in us. So it is the will of God that when we embrace the Holy Spirit and he come and begin to dwell in us, that he, that he quicken our mortal bodies. Even when sickness and disease want to invade our life, that we can stand and say that the spirit of God lives in me. The very spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and on account to the word of God that that spirit lives in me. Let the Holy Spirit quicken my body to define health. Let, that you can declare, let every cell 
Let every tissue in my body be quickened to life. In Jesus' mighty name. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, to quicken our, to quicken our health. You see, there are many wonders that were achieved at Calvary. There were many wonders. Our healing was purchased at Calvary. Our deliverance was purchased at Calvary. Our deliverance was purchased at Calvary. Our good life was purchased at Calvary. The wonders achieved at the cross of Calvary are performed or they are executed by the Holy Spirit. All that Jesus achieved for us at Calvary, it is the Holy Spirit who executed in our life. May we call it our healing, a good life. Jesus purchased, for, Jesus purchased it for us at Calvary. A life of peace of mind. You know, nowadays you can even hear young people say how stressed they are. And it's like stressed. Amen. But just because a few things here and there, you know, maybe a, some challenge, maybe at school, friends letting you down, disappointment here and there. And it's like we are saying, how disappointed we are in life. How stressed we are. But imagine, the word of God is telling us, through the Holy Spirit, the wonders that Christ achieved for us at the cross of Calvary, they can be executed in our life. Even a peace of mind. It is a blessing to be enjoyed by all of us. In Jesus' mighty name. So the Holy Spirit, he is the one, when he comes to a believer, when he comes into our life, that he is able to turn our lives into a sign and a wonder. God is able. The Holy Spirit can turn your life into a sign and a wonder. And this is the will of God for our lives. Number four, Another work of the Holy Spirit, the impossible works. The impossible works. We can open Zechariah 4 6. The impossible works are carried out by the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4 6. And God said to Zerubbabel, not by strength, not by power, not by mighty, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So, and the Bible says, so he answered, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by strength or mighty, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. There are issues in our life that seem impossible. Sometimes it's like you can even look where you have come from. You look at your father and mother and see the, the kind of life they are living. And maybe at times they can be struggling. And it's like you ask, what will become of me? And you can like at times feel that you are losing hope. But I want to tell you, with God, Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. And as he said to Zerubbabel, it's not by strength or mighty, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. There is nothing impossible where the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit of God is. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. At times, you can hear a, a very young person, 25, 24, they have a dream that they want to build a house for their parents. I want to tell you, if that is your dream, nothing that is impossible with God. Amen? 
For you, if your father and mother, they have a house, you may not know what I'm talking about. But any young man or any young girl who look at the way their, their parents live and it's like he has a dream. This is the desire of my heart. That one day that I can get maybe my parents from the plots and build them a house. And it's a time you look at your life and say, I think this is an impossible thing. I want to tell you, as God said to Zerubbabel, not by strength or by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Where the Holy Spirit of God, where the Holy Spirit is, nothing is impossible. As you continue to trust in God, I'm telling you, that dream will be realized. Some of you, maybe even the pilot did not have money to take you to the courage. You are trying to make it meet. If you have the desire to continue with the college, may God shake heaven this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus and through the power of the Spirit. May God open door for you. Why? Because there's nothing impossible with God. There's nothing impossible with God. It is possible. It is possible. And I want to tell you, nothing is impossible where the Spirit of God is. He finished his courage. He got his degree. I think he, did he get master's? Just like that, working and going to the college, working and going to the college. Then later, he got married. Today, he's blessed with three kids and a missing family. Amen. Even as I'm talking with you, it's not in the country. It's from glory to glory. Why? Yeah, he's in the in US. Where the Spirit of God is, there is nothing that is impossible. Never give up in life. Never give up in life. And bless the Holy Spirit, and the dream of your life will be realized in Jesus' mighty name. Some of us, we can even feel more disadvantaged. I do there are times people just jump, jump here and there. Some even may not be having one of the parents. And it's like you feel, I think I'm more disadvantaged. And it's like you look at your life. If the dad was there, I think things would not be like this. Or you would be said, if mom was there, I think things would be better, Lord. Let me tell you. And bless the Holy Spirit. The dad may not be there. The mom may not be there. But Jesus is there for you. Jesus is there for you. Jesus is there for you. He's, the word of God says, I am the father to the fatherless. God is the defender of the orphans. So that is not something that you know that the devil should Bring in your life and it will look like an excuse for failure in life. No. Why? God is your father. God is your father. Some of us, maybe we got disappointed. Or we had some issues with our parents. We are, and it's like we, never, we are never in good terms. But even in, the, in such moment. We should never give up in life. We need to embrace the Holy Spirit. When we embrace him, the impossible will be turned into possibility. And when people look at our life, it surely will be a proof of what God can do in our lives. The Bible says in, in Isaiah 32, verses 15, until the Spirit is poured on us from on high, the wilderness 
becomes a fruitful field. And a fruitful field is considered a forest. You know what the word of God is saying? The life of the wilderness will continue. The life of struggle and frustration will continue until, you know, the, using the word until, so it was a continuation of something. Until the spirit is poured from on high, then our wilderness, it is turned into a fruitful field. And our, our unfruitful field is considered a forest. But when the Holy Spirit is poured on us from on high, things are subject to change. Our frustrations will, be, will change. Our disappointment, where we, are, we were once disappointed, it may be our place of appointment. Where we had a setback, God will use it as our stepping stone to our destiny. Until the Spirit is poured on us from on high, the wilderness is turned into a fruitful field. May the Spirit of God be poured on us from on high and let our situation change. Let the frustration change. Let the disappointment change. Let where we had felt hopeless we find hope once again in the name of Jesus. And may God open doors for you. You know, at times, I know when we are young, they are our prime years, and it's like we have great aspirations in life. This is all that I want to become. This is all that I want to achieve. And at times, this things can be working against us from all sides. And we can feel like giving up. But I want to tell you, when the Spirit of the Lord is poured upon us from on high, even in the desert, imagine you can find hope. You can find hope. And that is what the word of God is saying. The wilderness becoming a fruitful field. In the natural, that one looks impossible. But the Bible is telling us, after the Holy Spirit is poured, it is possible. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, he is the expert of the impossible. He is an expert of dealing with the impossible. He is an expert in dealing with the impossible in our life. The possibilities that we desire, they are brought about in our life by the Holy Spirit. And bless the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and he will turn your life into a sign and a wonder. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We read the last scripture, Judges 15. Judges 15. And I read verses 14. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted as they met him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Get the, the King James Version, please. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the lobes that were on his arms became like flax that was burnt with fire. And his blood dropped from off his hand. And he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, leaped down and took it, and struck a thousand men with it. Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps on heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, 
have struck a thousand men. It happened when he had finished speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand. And that place was called Lamath Lehi. You know, at this time, the Philistines, they had come to Samson and they had bowed him with two lobes. And uh, the Philistines thought now they have over, overpowered Samson. And they came shouting. So I think they were, um, they were just making fun of him. Let us see what now you can do. We finally got you. We have bowed your hands with the ropes. Let us see what you will do to us now. And they thought that is the end of Samson. They, they thought maybe they wanted to kill him. But the Bible says in verses 14, as they shouted, as they met him, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. The spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. And the cords that were upon his arms became as frax that was burnt with fire. And his bags loosed from, his, from off his hands. When the spirit of the Lord came upon him, and the Spirit of God, the Bible says, the Spirit of God came mightily upon him. You know, there are times we need the Spirit of God to come upon us mightily. In order to penetrate. In order to have a breakthrough. In order to break forth in our life. There are times that we need the Spirit of God come on us mightily. Some of you, you need the Spirit of God coming on you mightily to get to your destiny. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord coming on you mightily. Because from where maybe you have come from, generations have been bowed. There's a, there's a cycle of failure, maybe. There is a cycle of disappointment that has followed that family. And in order to bring a tunnel out to, to your life, you need the Holy Spirit coming on you mightily. Some of you, there are strongholds from where you have come from, and you know it because it is your family. You know where you have come from. The things that you are, people have always struggled with. Some of you, your family life, they struggle with the alcohol. And it's like, hata kama umeokoka, kuna wakati unasikia, he, na iki to see obaya. Why? <laughs> you, know, you know what the Bible says? I was conceived in iniquity. So maybe in your conception, when you got conceived, kuna kapa obekadogo kari ingia. And you're still struggling with it. I tell you, you need the Holy Spirit coming on you mightily to katoe. See, Dio? Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God have mercy on us. Katoe irigia. See, onyigi. But the Holy Spirit has come. Now you need him come mightily over your life that you break this and break it and break it forever. That even your children that will come, they will not struggle with the same thing that your grandfather struggled with, that your father struggled with. And somebody is asking, how are these things? You know, there are those things that follow us from our bloodline. From the bloodline. Maybe you are conceived out of wedlock. No me okoka. Lakini you are struggling. It's like the Christian walk is a little struggle. We need the Spirit of God coming 
a new mitre to break these ropes of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Maybe you have come from a, a place, from a family, a, a dysfunctional family. Where dad and mom parted their way and it's like, Mi kitu ya doa na yogopa. Wanini, what happened to my parent? May the spirit of the Lord come upon you mightily. And we break these ropes today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson mightily. And the cords that were upon his arms became as brass that was burnt with fire. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes, you know, there are times he comes as the spirit of fire, and you know, he burns those things. Even there, sometimes there are, you know, there are things that we are struggling with huh? in a personal life, in our personal life. And we need the fire of the Holy Spirit to come and burn them up in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible says, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, it's not only the ropes, you know, that were broken, but he found a fresh jaw of a donkey. And he reached down and took it. At, you know, when you look at Samson at this point, he was disadvantaged because the Philistine were many, and he is all alone. I believe what, it was the men of all of Philistine that had come to Samson because they knew he was a threat to them. It's not the cowards. It was not the faint one. The strong men of war are the ones that were shouting at Samson. And when he looked at it, he had no any weapon of war. And the Bible says, he saw a fresh jawbone of a donkey. He reached it, he reached down and took it. And the Bible says, he struck a thousand men with it. A jawbone. A jawbone. Imagine a jawbone. Victor, imagine a jawbone. Just a jawbone. He took it. And he struck a thousand men with it. A jawbone is just, it was just an ordinary thing. Maybe the Philippines, the Philippines, the Philistines were treading on it. But to Samson, because the spirit of the Lord was upon him, he saw it as a weapon of war. He took it and he struck Philistines that day. And the Bible says he killed a thousand men with a jawbone. Just an ordinary thing. Ordinary. But he had extraordinary results. Why? The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. You know, there is. There are times it's like we look at our life, especially when we are young, and even in career selection, we look at our life. No, it's like I want to become great. Yes. And you speak to yourself. But I have gone to do teaching. And it's like, would I really make it in life? In te you know, just being a teacher, what do you like? Would I achieve much? And at times you ask yourself those questions. And it's like, you say, maybe if I scored, a higher grade, maybe I would have chosen maybe another kind of job, maybe I would be getting a lot of money. But let me tell you, whichever career you could be in, or maybe you will choose, let me tell you, all that you need is the power of the Holy Spirit in that career. Just an ordinary career, but you can have extraordinary results. Just a teacher. But you are enjoying and life is good and life is great. 
Amen. Because there are times we can get discouraged even from our colleagues. And they look at say, there are those that that say, maybe if you just go and do hospitality, it is because you failed. Have you ever them have you ever heard them say that? Or have you ever heard them say that? <laughs> we leave you set in Jesus' mighty name. You can't go do that hospitality. Huh? Just an ordinary one. Ordinary. But you have extraordinary results. Because the Spirit of God is upon you. The Spirit of God is upon you. You should not allow anyone to frustrate you. You should not allow anyone to discourage you and tell you you will never achieve it in life. All that you need to understand is to know who you are in Christ and embrace the Holy Spirit. Let him allow him to come mightily over your life. And out of the ordinary, you can have extraordinary results. Out of the ordinary, you can find yourself doing exploits. Amen? In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Just being a hairdresser. You can become a great woman. Don't let anyone bring you down. And that all that you could do is just become a hairdresser. Tell them, this is what I was wired to be in life. This is my job on. This is your job on. All that you need, it is excellency in it. And I can tell you, if, you, if the Spirit of God is upon you, and there is excellency in what you are doing, you can be booked from Monday to Sunday. People queuing in your place of work. For somebody has saying, just a hairdresser, yes, this is my job bone. Amen. Just a baba, yes. Brother, just a baba, yes. Out of it, you just need the power of the Holy Spirit. That they will, be, they will be booking you. I'm booked. I am booked. Let me see where I can schedule you. That is what we need. Amen. You're not getting excited. I think I'm getting excited in my spirit. Yeah. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord coming mightily on us. And in what we are doing, and in what we have engaged our life to do, that we can see the hand of God. We can do exploits in the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May the spirit of the Lord come upon you mightily. Even in your career, in whatever field you need the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, it's not the title of what you will become. It is, the, it is what you are doing, the Spirit of the Lord to come upon it. The Spirit of the Lord to come. You can just be selling groceries, but I'm not telling you, you leave school, you go sell groceries. You have to finish school and work hard. But out of it, you can see the hand of God. If the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, my tree, and apply Excellency in whatever you do. Excellency. Because many people, they miss it because they are not excellent in, they are not excellent in what they are doing. If we, we apply excellency, when we have the spirit of God, another day I will teach you, he is the spirit of excellency. He teaches us to, to do things in an excellency way. And that way, like somebody like Daniel, he served six kings. Oh, I
spirit of excellency was upon him. So, when the spirit of God come on us, let me tell you, there are doors that will open up in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Let us embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit and he will turn our lives into a sign and a wonder.